this Oracle J Developer Overview. Oracle J Developer is a completely integrated development platform. It gives you an integrated development experience across all the layers of your application, and it covers the full development lifecycle of your application, from modeling, through coding, debugging, monitoring the performance, and all the way to deployment. Oracle J Developer has been optimized for the Oracle platform, but it can work on other platforms as well. It covers a range of technologies, including Java and Java Platform Enterprise Edition. It allows you to build web services, both using the REST and SOAP interfaces. You can build web, desktop, or mobile application. It can connect and create database objects. And it also integrates very well with the rest of the Oracle Fusion middleware set of components. Let's see the development experience with JDeveloper. We're going to develop a Java E application. In here, we are going to create the application, defining some default uh, parameters and creating two projects, the model layer and the view controller layer. In the model layer, we're going to create JPA entities that will connect to a database and be based on tables in that database. Here, we're defining the connection to the database. We're using an Oracle database, but it can also be a non-Oracle database. And once we establish the connection, using the wizard, we are able to go and query the data dictionary and then pick the tables that we're interested to work with and continue going through the wizard setting properties for our JPAs and how they're going to be generated for us. Once created, the code is available for us to edit for each one of the entities. Another approach for development in JDeveloper is to use modeling. So let's go over and create a new diagram. You can start from conceptual UML diagrams, or in our case, we're going to create an actual diagram of the EJBs and JPAs that we're working with. Here we're creating the new diagram. And then we can use existing code and just reverse engineer it into the diagram, basically represent it in the diagram, like we do here. We took our two classes and represented them in diagram. We can also use the diagram to do forward development. So here we dragged over a session bin component into the diagram. This prompts us to actually create the uh, session bin, which is going to act as a facade for the two JPAs that are in our project. Completing this wizard creates the session bin, defines the connection. We can see it in the diagram and double click on the object in the diagram to go into the code editor for this session bin. Let's see some of the features of the code editor in JDeveloper. The code editor is very helpful and very powerful. So over here, for example, if we're trying to create a new method, the editor helps us while creating it, prompting us to notify us, for example, um, doing code insight over here, looking at uh, available methods and the documentation for each method. Once we pick a method, we can see an insight into the parameter, the type of parameter, and again, get very detailed help while coding our Java code. If we make any mistakes, those mistakes are going to be highlighted. And JDeveloper can also offer ways for us to solve issues. For example, to create an unexisting variable, to change the signature of a method, or even a refactor code if we need to. Let's fix the last problem in our code by having an initial value for our parameter or variable. And now we're ready to use our session bin in our user interface. We can expose the session bin as a REST service, as a SOAP service. And what we're doing here is actually leveraging JDeveloper's integration with the Oracle ADF framework to expose the EJB as a data control. A data control allows us to use this component in web interfaces in a declarative way. This didn't change anything in the code itself, it just introspects the code. Now we're going to go and create a JSF page flow. So this is using a page flow diagram in JDeveloper, where you can visually model the flow of your application, defining the various pages and the transitions between them and the actions that are going to affect them. What you're actually doing here is creating the faces config XML file, and you can also edit the code directly or use the overview tab that you can see below to change values. Now let's click on one of the pages to actually create a JSF page using the facelet standard. 
we're taking into the visual editor for pages in JDeveloper. And over here we can see on the right side the list of the UI components, the JSF components we have access to. And we can simply drag and drop them into the visual editor to create our page. In this case we're using a grid layout and again using a dialog we're prompted to configure this grid. For example we can define spans in our grid. Now that we have the basic layout of the page we can go over and pick up the collections that are exposed from our JPA entities and drag and drop them into our page. For example here we are dragging over the employees uh, and that's basically the result of the JPA query for employees and we're dropping it as a table. We can turn on various behaviors on the table and this will automatically bind the JPA object into a JSF component on our page uh, using the ADF binding uh, technology. We can select which fields to show, remove fields that we are not interested in and reorganize the fields in any order we want to. We can further take the same collection of data and represent it on the same page as an updatable form. So this again will create a form where each field is represented by a component in the user interface and through this form we can actually go over and update the data in our JPA. JDeveloper is also integrated with the ADF data visualization component which means that we can for example take the same set of data and represent it in one more way which is as a chart. Okay, so if we drag it over we're going to choose one of the ADF charts. JDeveloper makes it very easy to define the chart properly and set the specific values for each one of the accesses of the chart. Now that our page is complete, we can go and even look at the code. If you'll notice, the page itself in the visual editor has a tab at the bottom called Source. Clicking on it will take you to the source directly. You can modify code either directly in the source or using the property inspector as you can see now and it's affecting the source directly. To see this you can actually split the view and look at the same page both in visual mode as well as in the source itself. The two are kept in sync so a change in one reflects in the other. Now let's go and run the page. We're using an embedded WebLogic server that allows us to test run Java e applications. Our application shows up in the browser. We can browse the list of employees. When selecting an employee we see the, dat the details at the bottom. We can try an update and if there's validation rules being uh, violated we get an error message. We can rearrange columns in the table, we can sort the table and we can even filter the table based on values. At the bottom we have a chart that shows us the salaries of the employees and we can zoom in on the chart to see data more clearly. All of this application was built very quickly with the declarative and visual approach that Oracle J developers provide for Java e developers. To learn more about Oracle J developer, visit oracle.com slash jdev where you can find a download of the product, video training, tutorials, discussion forum and much more.